Uh, good morning. It's uh, Saturday, the 2nd of July, 2022, and um, here I am in hospital in Basingstoke in the UK. And I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. Uh, so, you know, I was reading... I was reading in my Bible the story of Lazarus being resurrected from the tomb, you know, in John 11. And uh, what, what an incredible event in history. What, what an incredible miracle that, that often I think we just miss it. We don't see it for all its glory because we see it as this one time big event. There was Lazarus who, who Jesus loved, the Bible says, loved him. And... Um, you had Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters, sending word to Jesus to, to please, he's dying. Can you come and do something? And Jesus um, delayed it. He didn't go. And I don't know what Lazarus must have been thinking in his final, final moments. You know, where where is Jesus? He loves me. And where is he? And then he dies. And, and uh, Jesus feels compassion. He goes. And, of course, Martha comes out and she says, Lord, where have you been? You know, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And um, Jesus goes up to the tomb, asks them to roll away the stone. And she kind of even argues with them at that point and, and says, but Lord, you know, he's been in there four days. The stench is going to be really bad. And uh, Jesus said, roll away the stone. And they rolled away the stone. And Jesus famously said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out wrapped in his grave clothes alive alive and uh, what an incredible thing and then to see the son of god god himself emmanuel god incarnate right there with his arms open wide he must have embraced him what a what an amazing thing surely lazarus's life uh, would never be the same after that i mean he would have utter certainty right that that christ is god and um, he was living in privileged times when God was walking the earth. And what got me, what got me emotional was how many, how many Lazarus moments have we had that we've missed? Simply, we've missed them because we weren't wrapped in grave clothes. And when we were called out of the grave, Jesus wasn't physically standing in front of us and we just walked on by. We walked past him, you know. I tell you, when I came to know Jesus in prison in 2004, 2005, I knew that I was dead. I was dead in my sins and trespasses, as the Bible says it. I knew it. And I knew that I'd been born again. I'd been set free. And, and, I, and I was so excited. My life was never the same again. I was radically changed and I had a burning desire to share my faith with others. And I've been doing so ever since, since I was released, uh, since I was in prison and since I was released in 2007. I have been in full time faith based ministry, no job, no income, God alone providing uh, in many ways. I've been to over 27 countries and shared the gospel in some of the toughest prisons on the planet in schools and, and churches and on the streets. I mean, you just can't shut me up for Jesus. There's no urgency that I don't have to tell people about him. But I tell you, that I tell you this, I'm being straight with you. There's been many more Lazarus moments. I am Lazarus. I am. You are Lazarus if you know Christ because you were dead. You were dead. There's no, there's no other words for it, okay? You were dead in your trespasses and sins and you got born again. And Jesus gave you life. And I tell you, um, that's the born again moment, right, as well. But what about the other times that we've cried on Jesus? You know, here I am in, in hospital. And just four or five weeks ago, they, the oncologist sat with my wife and I and said, sorry to tell you that your cancer's come back. I know we gave you the all clear um, last October and you know, there was no more cancer, but the six month scans come up and a different kind of cancers come back. And um, it's a very rare form of cancer. 
Unfortunately, you've got six months to nine months to live. And with palliative care, maybe two to three years. That's big news. Um, and a small chance of an operation. And if it's successful, uh, that may extend your time. And, and what's been incredible is all the, the prayers that have gone up. I mean, the previous operations, the prayers, the prayers and prayers. And the Lord brought me through it each time. And I've got to be straight with you. I maybe didn't give God all the glory. Maybe I, I no, there's no maybe. I was like, well, I'm, I'm a strong guy, you know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm solid. I'm robust. I can get through a lot. I've got a great pain threshold. And, and I stole. I stole. I stole some of the credit for what Jesus did for me then. And I added to myself, I pinned a medal on my own chest, you know. And yet I still gave him the glory. But it was because I wasn't wrapped in grave clothes and he wasn't standing in front of me and I just walked past him. I, I just missed him so many times and it's just ridiculous really. But here I am again. So four weeks ago, we get this news and I tell you, I felt utter peace utter peace it was devastating for my wife to hear the news and you know there's been some stuff that we've had to work through it's really brought us closer together and last last wednesday i came in for major surgery major abdominal surgery i mean the scar from up at my solar plexus down below my belly button another big scar here because they also did a stoma reversal at the same time and dealt with a hernia it was massive i mean I was in the operating table for nine, uh, nine hours and then sedated for 27 hours in total. It was really, it was hard. And if you were one of those people praying, I just really want to thank you, you know. Prayers from all over the world were going up. And, and like Martha and Mary, you know, running to Jesus, please help him. He won't die if you, if you come. Well, Jesus did one better for me than uh, what happened with Lazarus. And I, in other words, he didn't wait until I was in my grave clothes sitting in the hospital morgue. Jesus turned up and during my toughest moments, I'll tell you those first three, four days after the op, I, I was, I don't like to admit it, but I was ready for giving up. I, I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I just had enough of operations and and I was ready and I even said, Lord, you know, if it be your will, just take me home. Um, if not, give me the strength to get through this, please. But the Lord was already there. He was by my side. And then amazingly, there was a remarkable turnaround in, in my recovery. It really sped up. They, they began to call me their, their star patient. And they predicted that I would be here minimum two to three weeks uh, of recovery afterwards because of the intensive nature of the surgery. And... Uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you that today is day 10 um, from the operation, day 10, and they're letting me go home today, on the Saturday. Um, they're saying that I've, uh, I've got great mobility, I've recovered well, I'm not using any pain relief at all, I hadn't used any pain relief for days and days now, and um, they just can't believe it. They're just all amazed, you know. I had to go for a scan yesterday, uh, to make sure there wasn't any blood clots. And the, the guy giving my scan, he said, uh, well, I can see that, that like you're so upbeat and you're so progressive in terms of the other patients that we see from that particular ward, the critical care unit. Um, then they're not as mobile as you are so quickly. And so a real miracle has taken place, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's a, yet another Lazarus moment where Jesus turned up and I'm not going to miss him. I'm not, I mean, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to miss him. I'm not going to walk past him this time. So I'm here today to thank my Lord. I thank my Lord, my Saviour, my Jesus again for rescuing me from death. And uh, how will my life change? Well, I don't think anything, anything could give me more of a burden to share my faith than I already have. That's not going to change, but there's going to be some changes in, in other um, areas. I just appreciate what my Lord has done for me. And so, yeah, I'm going home today, um, a whole week earlier than expected. Um, I've still got a, quite a way to go, still a lot of recovery to, to happen at home. Um, 
But look, I want to throw the question back at you. Please, you know, time is short. Time is short. Time is short. You've had your Lazarus moment. Some of you would have had a Lazarus moment many times when you've called upon him in sickness or disease. And then, and then maybe we get a bit blasé about what the Lord has done. But let's just go back to that initial time when you were dead in your sins and trespasses. And, and Jesus reached into the grave and he pulled you out and he breathed new, new life into you. And you were born again. You know, think of Lazarus in that moment. How was his life? We don't know from the Bible. How was his life after that? Um, it, surely it must have been radically changed. Please just don't go to church on Sunday, go to a Bible study, go to a conference and that be it. That is not that is not Christianity, okay? That's a small aspect of it. No, Christianity is about making disciples, sharing the word of God with others, going into the world and preaching the gospel, finding people around you that don't know him and sharing your Lazarus journey. Um, you know, life is short and there are people out there who don't know him and you, you have the key. Um, share your faith my goodness share your faith because he has done amazing things for you and for me um, yeah god bless you god bless